Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, derive a block diagram for a closed loop system. In this, uh, in this block diagram shown below, we're going to derive a closed loop transfer function for the disturbance. Uh, so this one is our, our input, our disturbance, and then we have our output y. Okay, so we want to derive y over d for this uh, block diagram. So let's go ahead and just start writing um, our y function. And that's just going to be y3 plus y2. Okay, now y3, uh, we're going to go ahead and plug in that one as well. y3 is going to equal um, d plus y1 times g3. Okay, so uh, you have d plus y1 here. Um, and then you just multiply that by g3 to get y3. And then we're also going to add back our y2. But that one is going to equal plus g2 times p. Okay, so y2 equals g2 times p. We're just substituting that in. Okay, now um, let's go ahead and, and uh, get our expression for y1. That's just going to be uh, g1 times p. Okay, and uh, go ahead and substitute uh, that in. I'm going to go ahead and erase this uh, that I wrote earlier. And so I have y equals d plus g1 times p times g3 plus g2 times p. Okay, so I have, um, I have this expression. Let me just go ahead and uh, collect the p terms now. Um, and that is going to be equal to d times, uh, I'll, put, I'll put my transfer function first before the disturbance, and then g1, g3 times p plus g2 times p. So I'll just go ahead and factor out uh, the p now. g1, g3 plus g2 times p. Okay, um, so, so now let me get an expression for p that's just going to be equal to kc times e. Okay, that's our um, E, and then E is because our set point doesn't change. In deviation variables, that's just going to be zero. Okay, so, so we don't need to consider this, this plus. E is just going to be equal to a negative Km times Y. Okay, so uh, I just took our E, and I followed this back. I had uh, Ym, so it could be equal to negative Ym, or if I just took it back one more, I have a negative km times uh, y. Okay, so, so let me go ahead and substitute that in for my, my p value now. So y equals g3 times d plus g1 g3 uh, plus g2 times, okay, and then that's just going to be uh, kc times negative uh, km times y. Okay, so now what I need to do is go ahead and multiply this out and bring uh, the y terms over onto the other side. Okay, so I have y g3 d uh, plus, okay, and then just go ahead and multiply this, this out. Okay, so I have, um, I'll just write my negative term out here in front, and that is going to be, uh, so, so I'm going to be varying this value of km there, so I want to keep that that around. So it's just going to be uh, Km times Kc times uh, G1 uh, G3. Okay, and then uh, times, uh, let's see, that's, that's going to be times Y, and then I also have a, a negative, let's see, Kc, Km, G2, times y. Okay, so I'm going to bring that over to the left-hand side and uh, then just go ahead and factor out um, the, the y from that. Now you can see here that uh, what, what I'm going to do is, um, okay, go ahead and take that over to the left-hand side and then I have y, y, 1 plus, and then it's going to be k, m, k, c, g, 1, g, 3, uh, plus Kc, Km, G2. And that equals G3 times D. Now if I just go ahead and take this and divide it over there and uh, take my D back over here, okay, then I have the overall 
transfer function and kc g1 g3 plus kc k m g2 <coughs> okay so that's my um, that's my overall uh, transfer function and I can also factor out you know, I can factor out my km kc there um, and uh, so, so let's go ahead and, and do that uh, and we'll also try to answer in this case uh, part B for the following transfer functions I didn't I didn't include those but I'll go ahead and write them out uh, what values of KC will the will result in a stable closed loop system okay so um, let me just go ahead and write y over D equals g3 1 plus and then I'm going to have my km kc and then I have g1 g3 uh, plus g2 okay so um, for a stable system what I have to have is the uh, the poles of the denominator all have to be negative um, <clears throat> okay so uh, let me go ahead and plug those in so I, I set this equal to zero this is also called a uh, characteristic equation. Now it's called a characteristic equation uh, because you can use it to uh, determine the values of Kc for which the system uh, will be stable. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and substitute uh, these in just to this denominator equation. Okay, so I have Kc and uh, then my transfer functions. I didn't give these to you, but I'll go ahead and write them in. Um, S plus uh, minus one. Okay, then plus four divided by two s plus one. Okay, e equals zero. Now, one of the things that I can do is go ahead and multiply this out. I'm just going to show you a way to do this within MATLAB. We'll call this our G open loop right here. Okay, so let's go over to MATLAB now and do a root locus plot to be able to determine the um, values for which K, uh, we can plug in for KC and have a stable uh, system. Okay, so I opened up MATLAB and the first thing I want to do is just go ahead and define a new variable S. And I'm just going to do that as transfer function S. Okay, and that's just a continuous transfer function. And then what I'm going to do is just define my G um, open loop. Okay, and that's going to be equal to 5 uh, divided by s minus 1 uh, plus 4 divided by 2 times s plus 1. Okay, let's just go back and check that. Okay, so I had, I plugged in this into uh, MATLAB and let me go ahead and just click enter. Okay, so that just combined the polynomial for me. And so what I'm doing now is I just want to do a root locus. It's our locus and then I'm going to do G open loop. Okay, so that's going to create a root locus plot and it'll show me for what values of KC I'm going to be uh, stable. So I can see right here where it crosses that line. That's where, um, let me just go ahead and just come in and, and see if I can see that point. Okay, that's, that's actually about one, a gain of one. So here you can see this is on the right hand side of the uh, plane, this pull starts here at a gain of uh, nearly uh, zero, and then it starts uh, coming over more and more as I um, as I increase the gain. Okay, so the system becomes more and more stable as I come over. There's my gain. If I zoom in, let me just see if I can zoom in here um, to uh, see this just a little bit better. Okay. I'm going to zoom in and just see where that stability limit is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and just trace this now um, as I go over. And it looked like it, it, MATLAB only plots it at, at certain points, but it's somewhere here between 1.19 and 0.6. Okay, so we want to find exactly uh, where that is, and you can increase the resolution within MATLAB uh, to get that to align just a little bit uh, better. But uh, let's go back to our example now. In MATLAB, it, it said it's, it's uh, somewhere right around 1 for the stability limit. Okay, so I've got this back here. And, and let me go ahead and multiply um, out uh, these expressions. I'll just go ahead and combine uh, the terms. Okay, so that's just going to be 1 plus Kc. And then I'm going to have um, within these brackets 
uh, 5 times 2s plus 1, and it's just going to be 4 times s uh, minus 1. Okay, so I just uh, com I'm combining these two, and then I'm going to be dividing by this uh, common or uh, dividing by this common denominator. Okay, and then um, and that equals zero. Okay, so now I'm just going to multiply um, both left and right hand side by this uh, common denominator, and then uh, multiply it out. Okay, so I have s minus one, two s plus one. Okay, and then that's going to be plus kc, and then that's times five, two s plus one, plus four s minus one. Okay, and that equals zero. Okay, so for what values of kc uh, do I have all um, <clears throat> all negative roots, uh, real parts uh, are going to be negative of, of my roots or my poles. Okay, so uh, I'll multiply this out. I have 2s squared minus s minus 1 plus kc and then uh, 10s plus 5 plus 4s minus 4 equals zero. Okay, and then uh, let me go ahead and just collect terms here. Um, 2s squared, and uh, then I have plus uh, 14 times kc minus 1, okay, times s plus kc minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so uh, in this polynomial, if any of these terms are negative, then I know that the system is going to be stable. So one of the things that I can do is just say that 14 times kc minus 1 has to be greater than 0, and also kc minus 1 has to be greater than 0. So in this case, I have kc has to be greater than 1 over 14, and then for this condition, kc has to be greater than 1. Okay, so, so for stability, both of these have to be met and so this is the most restrictive condition and so this says kc has to be greater than one for the system to be stable so let me just go back over to to matlab again and we'll just plot that that root locus plot and we saw that uh, right at kc right about one that's where the um, the pole crossed over onto the left hand side of the plane and uh, indicating that this system would be stable